NUMSA official has been gunned down outside the CCMA offices in Rustenburg today. The victim has been identified as NUMSA mining industry volunteer recruiter Malibongwe Mdazo. In a statement by the union, two others were wounded in the incident and are being treated in a hospital. In 2019, Mdazo survived an assassination attempt that took the life of a colleague, Mbeli Sobiela. Now two men were sentenced to 25 years in prison, while another was sentenced to life for that particular murder. Of the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa expressing shock and anger, let me take you to uh, the spokesperson tonight. Pagamile Khubi Majola, who joins me. Pagamile, good evening to you. Let me first begin by extending the condolences to yourself and the rest of your organization on the killing of Mr. Mdazo. Tell us about what you know about this case so far, the details surrounding this killing. Good evening, Cathy, and good evening to your listeners and to your viewers, and thank you so much for having us on the show. Um, Yes, it's a very, very sad day for us to have to relay these very painful news of the shocking murder of Ukomrade Malibongwe Mdazo. Um, <clears throat> what happened today was something that was truly traumatic. Um, essentially, he was shot in full view in public uh, as he was exiting the CCMA offices where Nunsa was participating in a very in a conciliation process at CCMA um, with regards to verification that had to take place at NURAC, which is a mining, one of the mining contractors that operates at Implats. And so for us, um, you know, the, the attack was just very violent. Uh, reports from our, uh, our shop stewards and some of our members is that Basically, this man walked up, he was in a balaclava, and he was, it seemed he was very clear that he was directing Ukomrid Malibongwe and shot at him directly multiple times, and unfortunately, he passed away at the scene. Um, and whilst that happened, a, a passerby was also shot, as well as another member of NUMSA, and both of those people are currently in hospital um, being treated for their injuries. In your statement, Pagamile, you paint what seems to be a hostile environment while trying to do your work and do recruitment at the Impala mine in particular. What do you, why do you believe that uh, Mr. Mdazo would have been a target? You, from the time that we have been organizing workers in that area, we have experienced a lot of hostility, particularly from the contractors, the employers who operate at Implats, they are very hostile to recognizing NUMSA as a trade union. They have done um, a lot of things to, to sort of frustrate our efforts to become recognized. Um, there was a strike that our members embarked on for more than two months because out of frustration um, from the behavior of the employer in, in frustrating our attempts to get recognized, workers got frustrated and embarked on an unlawful strike. And after we resolved that strike and managed to get many of them reinstated and, 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 and actually had an agreement that was negotiated through the Department of Employment and Labor, the very same employers, then uh, some of them reneged on that agreement and blocked our members from accessing the workplace. So there've just been many, many incidents where employers have just created this very hostile environment, which make it, makes it difficult for us to do our work as a trade union. Um, and of course, today for us, this incident of him being shot at the CCMA offices in a very public space while we are doing verification, um, for us, we believe is something that cannot be ignored as a possible motive for why he was murdered. Mm. So Pakamile, just so that we're clear, the negotiations that you're currently doing, are they with the individual subcontractors that you're going to each and every company, or do they include implants? And perhaps if you can explain exactly how that process go, is working. So ultimately, I'm trying to understand culpability. So who would be um, responsible 
to deal with these issues of tensions? Is it the subcontractors or the mine? We think that the employers have contributed to a hostile environment, an environment where workers are not free to join the union of their choice. And in so doing, we believe that the employers are fueling tensions. And if you consider the history of implants and the how those tensions have played out previously, I mean, we are in the month of August where we commemorate the Marigana massacre. The behavior of the employers is the type of behavior that um, creates an environment where violence can take place. And this is precisely what we have a problem with. And this is why we say that we want the police to take this matter very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. We have had great difficulty in just operating as a trade union, um, exercising our constitutional rights to organize workers and employers um, have not been assisting. Um, this is not the first incident of, of violence. There was violence even during the, the three-month strike. And this is why we're saying that there have been these tensions that have been um, playing themselves out. Now, this conciliation that was taking place at the offices of the CCMA is a process where the CCMA does a verification to confirm which union is a majority union in a, in the particular workplace that's what this meeting was about and it was during the uh, a break or a lunch break when this conciliation um meeting or process was taking place that U U comrade malibongwe and others came outside to take a break have a breath of fresh air that's when this attack took place and so given the context that we've been operating under, the hostility that we have met in the work that we've been doing in that area, we believe that all of this is tied to his, to his murder, and this is what must be investigated. So, so then what are you reading into it? What message do you think is being sent to NUMSA right now? The message that's being sent is that NUMSA members must not join NUMSA because if they join NUMSA, they will die. That is what we believe the message is being sent. It's a form of intimidation. It's a tactic to undermine the, the free choice that workers have when it comes to choosing the union of their choice. Now, we do not want to participate or be drawn into any kinds of, uh, you know, disputes or violence or anything like that, because we are a very um, peaceful union. We're a union that follows the law. But at the same time, we have a duty to defend our members and to be honest and uh, about the situation and call it out for what it is. Uh, right now, our members are in danger. And if the police do not do their work of rooting out those who are guilty for this vicious, violent, uh, callous act, then it will only spur more violence in this area and will create a an enormous amount of uncertainty because it will mean that workers are not free um, to choose a union of their choice and it will mean that the violence and the tensions in that area will continue. One of the things that I would imagine would need to be prevented at all cost going forward is further loss of life. So in terms of brokering peace, if I can put it that way, between the between the different parties right now what do you think it would take to to actually get to that point i think the best thing that would assist justice and peace is that the perpetrators must be found as quickly as possible because we cannot operate in a space of fear workers uh, should not operate in a space of fear where their lives are being threatened simply because of the choices that they're making and it is, this is why for us it is very, very urgent that the police should take this matter very seriously. Numsa National Spokesperson Pagamile Klubi Majola and of course uh, talking there about the killing of one of their members that took place in Rustenburg in the northwest earlier on today. Well, we'll have more news.